Well, it's creative, but it's really quite unusual. At the root of all of these uh, situations is um, what's called a morals clause, or uh, the ability of a company to terminate somebody for cause. But in most instances, whatever dispute there is or investigation by the company, it's resolved before there's a settlement, and then there's a amount paid that's agreed, and there's a release. This is highly unusual because it's not over. Uh, what was creative was that the company was reacting to a wave of criticism and was able to reach a settlement and announce it today, actually, uh, and leave for future determination whether Mr. Moonves gets $120 million, which is going to be put in a trust, is going to be an investigation, and then the board will determine whether or not he has violated the uh, morals clause. And if so, he has an ability to challenge that in arbitration. So they've achieved the goal of resolving it now in the sense of announcing that they're dealing with it, that he's going to be terminated from the company, and then they're going to deal with the money issues afterwards. But Diane, if uh, Moonves is terminated for cause, presumably that would be because uh, they find evidence that some of these accusations are, are true. In that instance, does the company then face further legal challenges from uh, those women who have accused uh, Moonves of, of holding up uh, their careers, for example? Well, sure, the company... Hold, hold uh, that's for Diane, sorry. Mark. Yes. yes, so what will happen is, obviously, the, the internal investigation will be conducted, and that may take weeks, it may take months, um, and then they'll resolve the issue of his compensation. But however that happens, the company remains potentially liable for the actions of its CEO. I mean, that's kind of the essence of corporate liability. Corporations can't act, only individuals can. And so I'm sure that those directors are thinking carefully about <clears throat> their legal exposure because that can be significant. The situation that we have here can generate employment-related claims, as you already suggested. They also can generate securities lawsuits. We've already seen one filed in New York. And it can also generate claims that put the board members themselves at risk for failing to oversee, for failing to exercise their fiduciary duties, and that's serious business that I expect this board is thinking very carefully about. Mark, that sounds like a lot of potential liability. I, I imagine this is, could get very costly. I mean, out of looking at, across all those potential scenarios, what's the biggest risk here, and how real is it that one of these or multiple of these could play out? Well, there's a big risk, and I agree with Diane, that no matter what the board finds in its own ex examination, the company faces liability to the people who claim to be victims, and the issue will be uh, at any trial, and this is likely to go before a jury, so it's unlikely that a claim would be dismissed on a motion to the court. So there's a lot of potential for public exposure and unhappy public events, uh, but the exposure is, is significant if a jury were to find that uh, Mr. Moonves acted within the authority that he had at the company, that the things that he's accused of were matters that were within the scope of his employment. And that's the undecided issue. Um, Diane, let's talk about uh, what happens next for Mr. Moonves. Clearly, he maintains his uh, legal innocence, uh, publicly uh, at least, yet the board and the company have moved to act even before their own internal investigation uh, has finished. What do you make uh, about, therefore, the fairness towards Mr. Moonves and, and his ability perhaps to appeal in future against the, the fact that he has lost his role? I think what this reflects, Wilfred, is the world is changing. It used to be that board members would say, these are simply allegations. And so we need to really investigate and see what the outcome is of an investigation. Now, with the reality of the public perception and, and also sort of the nature and volume of the allegations here, I think boards and this board decided to act more quickly. For Mr. Moonves, of course, he can retain his ability to challenge whatever final decision the board makes, but realistically, would he do that? Um, one wonders, um, but it obviously depends on what the results of the internal investigation shows and just how aggressive he wants to be. The, the arrangement that they have that this will be resolved, a future dispute between Moonves and the company will be resolved in arbitration suggests that he may be more likely to challenge an adverse decision by the board because it would not be so public. But um, again, it depends very much on what the internal investigation finds. Mm -hmm. And I would think that the board would be very sensitive to the court of public opinion and also the consequences 
were there a raft of lawsuits, which undoubtedly will be in the courts and not in an arbitration setting.